There was a transition from old simple to new simple, and we didn't want a video game because we heard criticism from Corvette owners that they went from this analog setup to this video game setup. And it was like a disco when they got inside the car. So the main thrust of what we did was keep things simple, but still maintain the sense of purity somehow. It's something that from the get-go, we knew we had to make leap and bounds just fit and finish and, and overall feel interiors. You know, ultimately we want to make the SRT10 the best, the best car possible. Each interior we do, we're raising the bar. When you're going to see that on the road, you know, that's unique, that's special. Everyone's passionate about what they're doing. So even down the little nut and bolt, they're trying to make that thing the best possible. So that's, I mean, that helps. Then from our side, it's about coming up with then, you know, the exciting design. You know, spending time in Italy and talking to, you know, supercar owners there and talking to the people that build those cars there, you get a different feel for it. It's more like hand-built, coach-built. This is my car. And so that whole hand-built, you know, uh, personalization of each car, I think really kind of set the whole stage for the rest of the project. So it was, it was at those points when you were talking to customers and talking to people building cars that you kind of understood what the whole concept of a supercar or a prestigious sports car really is. We had our Viper owners and then we also had competitive cars like you know, Porsche owners, Lamborghini owners and we had them come in and drive four different vehicles. You know, we, we spent time, you know, obviously the cars that we provided for them, but then they told, they took us to their car. And I mean, you can see how passionate they are. They'll tell you the, the simple things that they've modified, changed, things they want to do, things that they don't like out of the factory, things they love out of the factory. So, uh, I mean, two days with those guys, it was probably 30 plus owners. And um, it was, it, we gained a lot of knowledge. We did that early on, which was very beneficial for us. I think with the base we've covered a timeless design, which is something we definitely wanted. And so with the design, I think we've kept it very clean, simple, athletic. And then with the color and trim, we ended up getting and different personas for every single vehicle. So you can have the one that you want. The Viper is unique in terms of all of our other product. You're going to get into this vehicle. It's all the main surfaces, all the touch points are wrapped. We don't do that today in any vehicle. Um, so that's going to be one huge, huge improvement. I mean, it's, you're going to feel that someone sat there, hand-stitched every component, and it was tailored to you, you know, which you see in the most extreme high-end cars out there. So that's something that was key. We had to have that on the interior. And, and just overall, it's not just product design office trying to push for improving, improving, improving. We see that throughout the rest of the company now. We visited the Ferrari factory and the Maserati factory, and we kind of learned how they wrap things. And that was key to the whole success of the interior was the efficiencies that they use in wrapping parts. And when you see it firsthand, it's a lot different than talking about it because you can see, you know, the person on the line or a person in the shop hand wrapping these parts and you can say to an engineer, no, it's, it's really simple, just do it like this and have that education. One thing that we've always gotten bad rep on, and is at least on the Viper and the interior, was a lot of the components were found. We yeah. built something from what we had, but we obviously the car is mature past that point. That was that was the origins of the, of the vehicle, but we definitely wanted to bring it into the yes. uh, Top Gear new guys era. Had a lot of fun with that. Yes, they did. Well, it's being creative with it because you know the, obviously the reason why in the past we've done that is because it it is low volume. You know, it's it's not gonna. It's not going to necessitate doing, you know, a unique tool in some cases for this stuff, but you shouldn't get those negative comments um, on, on those things. I mean, it's going to look like everything was meant to be, everything was designed together. I mean, we're trying to squeeze so much technology and safety things into uh, a, such a small cabin. Uh, I mean, part of the uh, uniqueness is definitely the very unique uh, packages I've ever worked on. Uh, I mean, the proportions are, are so unique to this car. and. That, I mean, follows into the interior. Uh, I mean, Dora, for example, we packaged, you know, uh, two speakers. We actually put in a map pocket that wasn't there in there, and we protect it for two airbags. We have to make sure that our designs aren't going to create, you know, crazy fit and finish nightmares and problems, and that's sometimes hard. You know, you want to do something that's cool and exciting. Um, so it's, it's, staying, it's staying with it, um, pushing it, you know, pushing the boundaries with it a little bit. Um, but uh, just in, in overall, I think the best part about it is that it's wrapped. You know, almost every A surface on that vehicle is wrapped in some fashion or another. Um, and that's going to be something that someone's really going to pick up on when they get in the interior.